Welcome back, everybody. If you're new, my name's Nicholas, and this is Investing Against the Grain. Now I know, we've been covering Ford a lot as of late. However, for Ford, today was maybe the biggest day they've ever had with regards to electric vehicles and the transition to going fully electric. Jim Farley was on CNBC today, so we're gonna have a t we're gonna take a look at that. We're gonna see this new announcement with battery factors and SK and all that good stuff. We're also gonna take a look at a few quotes from him from a phone interview that I think are interesting to say the least. But before we get into that, I want to take a look at a recent tweet from Elon Musk with regards to the new FSD beta rollout. And I think from a Tesla investor perspective, this is major. Now, before we get into that, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, and let's get into it. So on Tuesday, Elon Musk tweeted the following. Wow, lot of interest in FSD beta. Plan is to roll out version 10.2 midnight Friday then on ramp 1000 owners per day prioritized by safety rating so as we discuss on my previous video tesla fsd beta is going to be huge it's this is going to create a a demand a exclusivity factor and a want from people i work for a, a tech company a software company and internally we use slack as how we communicate with everyone and inside of slack we have a channel for tesla owners and in that channel you have everybody, I don't want to say freaking out, but they are just, you know, on high alert on how to drive safer, how to get their score up. And people are just laughing. It's kind of become this gamification on how to get their score up. You know, some people are talking about how they accidentally let their, their wives take the car and they didn't even know what was happening and their score dropped down. So it's this really interesting inflection point on safety and how people are are really striving to drive safer just to get this higher score so this gamification thing is playing out the entire thesis i had that this before fsd beta is even out it's going to incentivize people to drive safer and it's going to have a you know just more good in the world when it comes to driving safely after this elon did respond uh i'll scroll on down here saying apologies 10.2 release will be a week from friday so okay so one more week to go not that big of a deal um 10.2 we, we still don't have any information whether or not it's the full stack or not i know that i speculated that i think it is the full stack you know explain that why in my last video however rob mauer actually tweeted at elon musk if you're not familiar with rob mauer he's has uh the uh tesla daily channel great great channel i watch every day highly recommend you check it out but rob mauer tweeted at elon to ask if 10.2 would have the full stack right so kind of baiting him into that question was, su was suggesting that 10.1 wasn't the full stack elon has responded to him as of the recording of this video so we'll see if he does so then there was a, a uh, retweet or a response to elon saying awesome to hear what's the minimum safety rating uh to get beta and so this i love elon responds first days probably 100 out of 100 then 99 then 98 out of 100 and so on down this is awesome because Again, if you want to be one of those first people, your driving score better be a 100. So perfect. All right. You have to be the safest of drivers before you get FSD beta as it goes on. Right. And it gets rolls that rolls out. You know, he mentioned a thousand owners per day. It's going to just really cater towards the more safe drive. <clears throat> so, excuse me, my voice. <laughs> but yeah, so I love the fact that they go ahead and, you know, they're they're catering towards the safest drivers, which a lot of us have had fear that you know, one bad actor, one person abusing FSD beta is going to ruin it for all of us. So, so this is great news. And then there's some other stuff that came up that, you know, Elon hasn't responded to, but I just want to give um, a look at this real quick because I, I just thought this was important. And again, if you're a Tesla investor, which most of you probably are, this is a big deal because this is really going to start to reflect quarter after quarter after quarter. Now, what I'm what I would love to know, and eventually I'm sure they'll share this information, but what the breakdown is, how many of these requests were from Tesla owners who already bought the $10,000 package? And how many of these are subscriptions that people signed up for? If you're not aware, Tesla subscription is $200 a month and it's on a month to month basis and you can cancel at any month. It would, it will be interesting to see what the ratio is there because if the subscription numbers are a lot higher, it shows the demand, the want for this, which I think I think 
that might be where the majority of the volume is coming from. So we'll find out. We'll see what's going on. And I'm sure eventually they'll leave. They'll give us some idea of what these numbers look like. And as people start to roll out and they start to get FSD beta and we start to see what's happening with it, it's, it's going to have, I think, this kind of infectious um, effect where everybody starts to want it. Everybody's going to use it. We're going to see lots of videos out there. I think we're at the very precipice of a very exciting time with, with autonomous driving. Let's go ahead and transition into Ford and let's see what Jim Farley had to say today. Tell us why this commitment in West Memphis or outside of Memphis, as well as the uh, the two new plants in Louisville. Why did you pick those locations? Well, good morning, Phil. Uh, this is a really big day for Ford. This is our biggest manufacturing facility in the history of our company. And as you know, we're the number one auto employer in America, so it's a big deal. We picked the locations because uh, we have three battery plants, um, and, and the battery plant locations are very specific. We need affordable energy, we need the environmental approval done, and we need greenfield sites so we don't slow down with any remediation for environmental. Uh, the government support, access to um, skilled labor. These jobs are very different. Uh, all of those factors. Um, you know, we need the battery plants really close to the assembly plant. Unlike a powertrain, an ice powertrain, you can't ship batteries uh, far. They're very heavy and we want them right near the, the plant. So uh, that's why we're building such a big site. It's six square miles of the assembly plant to build new trucks. Um, and, and we need the battery plant on site. For those of you who haven't heard today, Ford announced a new partnership with SK to go ahead and develop some new battery uh, battery plants in Kentucky and Tennessee. So it'll be two in Kentucky, one in Tennessee. And it's an 11, approximately $11 billion investment of which seven will be given by or will be funded by Ford and four from SK. And what he's referring to here as far as you know, the, the battery plants and all in, you know, the location and why they're the reason is they're going to be creating a new F series uh, manufacturing plant as well, where where you would really want to have the batteries and the vehicles being produced as close as possible. Right. In other words, the Tesla model right? we have Shanghai with uh, cattle making a a major investment there with a battery plant right next to uh, Giga Shanghai. You have Giga Berlin that's going to have its own Tesla uh, battery factory. Austin will be the same way. So, you know, it, it's, the, it's the Tesla model is what, what they're talking about. What he was saying, you can't ship batteries. Okay, that's fundamentally just not true. What he means to say is that it's not an efficient way to, to make sure that you have less costs, higher margins, things of that nature. But like the the weight of batteries is not the reason you can't ship batteries. We do ship batteries all over the world. So that's just a silly comment. I mean, I don't know if he was just caught off guard, but I know what he meant. And that's why I'm clarifying on his behalf. Uh, I'm trying to give Ford as much benefit of doubt because I do think this is an exciting announcement. You know, even if I don't believe in Ford long term, I do think this is a good announcement. And I think it's very exciting that they are essentially understanding that this is the way they better go all in or they will be gone and they will not stand the test of time. Jim, you're also going to have, I know you're working with Redwood Materials, uh, which is battery recycling. You're also going to have basically from start to finish the entire life cycle uh, for the electric vehicle battery on these campuses so that you can say, look, at the end of life, let's recycle it. We have the materials that we can extract from these uh, batteries, the battery cells, put them into new ones. Uh, do you, a lot of people here look at that plan and they say, looks good on paper. I'm not sure that it's gonna be something that can be executed in reality. What do you say to that? And before I give Jim Farley a chance to answer to those comments, this has been something we've seen over and over, whether it's Volkswagen, whether it's GM, whether it's Ford, people make all of these grandiose promises that they're going to do this, they're going to do that. And then we just don't see a lot. I mean, even GM, you're right. They try to, they, they talk about their battery manufacturing plants and all that. And then they say they have the largest battery laboratory in all of North America. Well, who cares? Like size is not a measure of anything. All right. If anything, the bigger a, a manufacturing plant is or anything of that nature, right? It just shows how inefficient you are. It doesn't really, size isn't everything. Okay. Contrary to what you may have heard, size isn't everything. And I think 
that's kind of misleading here. Now, as far as what Phil Laboat is saying, it's a very reasonable critique. People say over and over, we're going to do all these things. And yet a lot of these things haven't been done or they get done and it's for a hybrid vehicle, which has two power trains. And then it just makes no sense. Let's give Jim Farley a chance to explain why this will be different and why Ford will be able to do this and why people should believe in this plan that they've outlined with SK and with uh, Redwood. Well, we disagree. Uh, this is something we studied. We have to do this, Phil. Um, okay. Well, I wasn't expecting that. So the argument against Phil's fair critique of People, you know, kind of look at it skeptically like, OK, you say you're going to do this, but yeah, we'll see one day. Maybe, you know, these are more just headlines and buzz marketing words just to get more attention and help get the stock up a little bit. And his rebuttal is, well, we disagree. Well, OK, well, we disagree. All right. Well, I mean, that's that's kind of hard to argue with. That's, that's a valid point. OK, you disagree. And then he has this sound of desperation. I mean, I don't know if you heard this, but l let's listen to this again. It almost sounds like he's desperate, like he, like he's freaking out because if they don't do this, they're going to die as a company. That, that's the tone I'm getting from this. Let me know below in the comments if you get the same tone and feel from Jim Farley, the Ford CEO, that they have to do this. They don't have a choice. Listen, listen to this again. We have to do this, Phil. 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 I don't know. Maybe I'm reading into this. Maybe I'm too Tesla goggles biased here, but that just seemed a little, I don't know, desperate in the way it came off. But again, I get it. I, I'm biased. Let me know what you think below in the comments. Let's go on. You know, look at the chip situation. We have to insource the batteries. We have to learn how to manufacture them in this country. We can no longer import raw materials from halfway around the world like cobalt. Um, the, these, these materials have to come from North America. We scrap in, in battery manufacturers a lot of batteries. We need to recycle those into the manufacturing process as quickly as possible. And as you said, at the end of life, we have to get those raw materials back into the manufacturing system. I think what you're learning here and seeing from Ford is not just a big investment to elect scale electric vehicles, a million vehicles worth of batteries in this case, but we are creating a local supply chain that's circular. So we don't have to depend on anyone. Remember that number. He just said a million vehicles worth of batteries, a million vehicles worth of batteries. So we're going to go back and unpack that a little bit because I think I think there's a lot of deception in some of these numbers that are said. And we're going to do some, you know, back of the napkin math together in a little bit here to really unpack these kilowatt hours and this million vehicle claim. And this kicks in what 25 is when we see uh, production at the uh, F series electric F series plant uh, just outside of Memphis and the the battery plants come online. So do we see real ramp up in production? Let's say 25 through 28 and then into 29. If Phil's right and this starts in 25 and ramps up into 29, then they're going to be in real trouble. This is essentially something that had to happen yesterday. But by that time, Tesla will be selling probably five to six million vehicles a year. Ford at right now, Ford at, at their peak are selling 2 million vehicles a year, I believe, in North America at their peak. And I don't know if you've seen this, but their, you know, total sales have been declining, you know, literally down and to the right for a few years now. So I hope this is not right, but let's let G uh, give uh, Farley here a chance to, to respond. Well, look, we're ramping up now. We have almost 20 gigawatt hours. The uh, Mach-E and the F-150 are completely sold out. F-150, we're above 150,000 orders now. So we're, we're not waiting for anyone. We're in the market now. It's show, not tell time. And yes, this is going to be an, a further ramp up of our battery electric volumes. As I said, a million units worth of battery capacity just for Ford. So do the math. You know, we sell about two, 2 million vehicles in the United States. This announcement alone is a million vehicles worth of battery. So it's a very large scaling. We're not going to tell everyone what the, what the product is, but we have a whole full F-Series lineup. We're the best-selling vehicle in America. Uh, we sell over a million F-Series, and we're going to build lots of new kinds of ground-up battery electric F-Series in this plant. All right, so there's a lot to unpack there. First of all, again, I get it. You're the CEO. You have to say these things. The Mach-E, maybe it's sold out, but that's 
not a function of, I would say, demand. It's just you don't have a lot of supply. Now, it could be demand. I don't know. I, I haven't seen the numbers what the demand is, but they're selling like two or 3,000 a month, I believe, right? I mean, it's not like they have any crazy numbers here. So, I mean, that to me sounds like either there's no demand or they're constrained, but I don't know the answer to that. So maybe someone out there does, maybe you guys done some research again, let me know below in the comments. To say that the F-150 is sold out is very disingenuous. Okay, if that's the case, then the Roadster and the Cybertruck are all sold out for, for Tesla. Oh, and that $25,000 vehicle that's sold out too. Oh, and that $18,000 vehicle that Stephen Mark Ryan talks about all the time, that's sold out too. That That's such a pointless statement to say. Maybe you can get away with saying Mustang Mach-E, even though we don't really know the, the, or I don't know the details of those numbers. And I've looked. All I know is the Mustang sales have declined over the years. He's talking about how they have, they have um, 20 gigawatt hours worth of batteries right now. So... 20 gigawatt hours, I believe, comes out to about 200,000. I mean, I'm just doing this in my head, about 200,000 battery packs. So 200,000 vehicles they could make. So if that's the case, and they're only selling a couple thousand Mach-E's a month, I, I don't understand what's going on there. But again, maybe my numbers are wrong. Keep me honest. Let me know below. And then he goes on to once again, talk about this million vehicles worth of batteries. All right. So million vehicles worth of batteries with these new battery plants that insinuates a lot and we have to think either we need to know what the kilowatt hour is per battery pack that you're referring to when you say a million or we need to know what the max ramp capacity per on a gigawatt hour basis is for 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 these battery or for these uh these plants and then we can reverse engineer to figure out you know what those battery packs are if we know it's a million vehicles so we're going to do some of that math here shortly uh, just again, just to try to keep some things honest and in perspective and interesting how he just ends it by saying, we're not going to talk about or announce or give anything away about our F series, you know, or we have a whole new lineup from the ground up. This is annoying, confusing, and exciting. Why is it annoying? Well, it's annoying because you just brought it up just to not talk about it. Nobody asked you about it. Nobody knew about this and you just decided to bring it up, but then you're not going to talk about it. Uh, all right. So why bring it up? It's, it's not like anyone was like baiting you to talk about this. So just keep your mouth shut. You don't have to say anything. That's why it's annoying. It's confusing because in this whole interview, this whole interview was about the SK relationship, about these new battery plants, about this new F series manufacturing plant. At no point did we talk about new lineups or anything. So why would you randomly bring it up? It, it's like he wanted, he was trying to pull Elon and just say a little something that would get attention, but I don't know. It, it was just weird, but it is exciting, right? So like I said, annoying, confusing, and exciting. It's exciting because he said that they're going to build them from ground up. Maybe for once Ford isn't just going to re re-engineer the powertrain from ice to electric and throw on a cabin that they already have existing. Hopefully this means they're going to start from the ground up, make a new vehicle, keep actual engineering principles in mind, reduce weight, be conscientious about drag coefficient and make a solid product. That would be excellent. That's exciting. All right, let's go ahead and get into some of these numbers and let's see, you know, what he's really talking about, what these things really mean. We just heard Jim Farley talking about the Mustang Mach-E and he also talked about how they have 20 gigawatt hours worth of batteries now. He's also talked about how the Ford Mustang Mach-E is sold out. So if we look right here, you'll be able to see that the Ford Mustang Mach-E within the United States, it's selling anywhere from two to 3,000 vehicles per month. Nothing really that crazy. However, if we look at this other chart, which you can see here, we can see that that range goes up between anywhere from five to 9,000 for production which insinuates that the rest are going overseas, predominantly Europe. Now he keeps saying that Ford is sold out for the Mach-E. Ignore what he said about the F-150 because like I said, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna consider the F-150 being sold out, then so is the Roadster, so is the Cybertruck, so is the $25,000 vehicle, so is the $18,000 vehicle, so is the other stuff that they're gonna do in, in the future. FSD is sold out, everything's sold out for Tesla in that case. So we're just gonna focus on the Mustang Mach-E, which you can see they have anywhere from, you know, five to 9,000 in production each month. So let's go ahead and do some math. So if you don't know, 
Within a gigawatt hour, you have 1 million kilowatt hours. Now, if you look up here again, you'll be able to see that the uh, Ford Mustang Mach-E has anywhere from a 66 to a 88 kilowatt hour battery. Now, what's the difference here? Well, the 66 kilowatt hours for the standard range and the 88 kilowatt hour is for the longer range. So we're gonna just go based off 68 kilowatt hours. And the reason we're gonna go based off that is because this means that they will potentially have more batteries um, and more vehicles that they can make, right? So I'm, I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. So if I take 20 gigawatt hours, convert that into kilowatt hours, that gives me 20 million kilowatt hours. If I divide that by the 68 kilowatt hours, we get, and that's per car, right? We get a total potential of 294,000 vehicles that they can make per year. Now, right now, they are producing 9K at most per month. Well, I mean, that doesn't take a rocket science to do that math. 108 vehicles is what they could make with, with those numbers. So where's the other two thirds? That's my question. I, I'm curious about what's going on there. So is this a demand issue? Because apparently it's not a supply issue if they have 20 gigawatt hours worth of batteries. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. So that, that's, that's interesting. Now let's do some other math real quick. Now with the announcement today with SK, what this means is that all these new battery manufacturing plants combined equate to a total of 129 gigawatt hours. Now let's assume that all goes to Ford. Every single last battery goes to Ford. Let's see what this could actually mean from a vehicle number count perspective. So let's take 129 gigawatt hours. To convert that to kilowatt hours, we'll just multiply it by 1 million. Okay, and that gives us 129 kilowatt hours. We know that the Mustang Mach-E can be anywhere from 68 kilowatt hours to 88 kilowatt hours. And we also know that the Ford Lightning can vary from 125 kilowatt hours to 170 kilowatt hours, again, depending on you know the range. Let's first take a look to be the most conservative and assume that all of this was just made for the Mach-E, which I doubt it if it's in association with the F-Series factory, but let's just, let's just do it for fun. So let's divide this by 68 kilowatt hours. That would give us about 1.8 million vehicles. That's not bad. That's not bad at all for Ford, especially if currently in all of the United States, they're selling 2 million vehicles a year. That's actually pretty good. That's impressive. However, we do know it's not for the Mach-E. We know it's for the F-Series. So Let's take a step back and make this a little more realistic. So we'll just multiply this by 68 again, and we'll get back to our 129 million kilowatt hours. So this time, let's imagine, again, being conservative, that we use the low end of the Ford Lightning 125 kilowatt hour standard battery. So if we do that, and we divide this by 125, what do we get? Okay, we hit almost dead nuts accurate the number he had mentioned an additional 1 million vehicles if we take this and we assume that all all of the vehicles made are going to be of that standard 125 kilowatt hours we'll get about a million electric vehicles that they can produce right they'll have enough batteries now in reality you know we'd probably multiply this by say 0.9 because there's gonna be downtime so it's gonna be just under a million but whatever, let's give them the, the benefit of the doubt. Now, this is where I think they run into a bigger problem. And I think the bigger problem that they have is the, the, by the time this happens, and this is fully ramped up, we're gonna be on the back half of the 2020s. All right, we're gonna be looking at 2025, to starting to, you know, just getting started to 2029. Now, why is this a problem? Well, the reason it's a problem is because there's a company called Tesla out there. And you also have all these other Chinese EV companies coming up and you have Rivian already getting going, but let's just focus on Tesla. The reason it's a problem with regards to Tesla is because right now at Giga Berlin, they are building a battery plant that's going to go along with Giga, uh, Giga Berlin, right? It's going to be right there on site. It's part of the actual um, car manufacturing plant. And if we look at our calculator again here, they're not planning on this being 129 gigawatt hours, according to Elon Musk, this could get up to 250 gigawatt hours. But let's say we scale that back. Let's say it's only 200 gigawatt hours. If we take 200 gigawatt hours and we convert that into kilowatt hours, 
and we divide this by say an average 65 75 kilowatt hours you know for a tesla vehicle for a model y and let's just say 75 just assume everything's gonna be long range so we divide we divide this by 75 this gives us about 2.6 million vehicles out of giga berlin alone per year now let's be fair let's multiply this by 0.9 same thing right we'll take that 10 percent cut and we're looking at 2.4 million vehicles now this is giga berlin right now tesla is already at they're essentially going to be at a million vehicles a year by the end of 2021 then you add in this 2.4 million okay so that's 3.4 million right there just giga berlin fremont and shanghai and keep in mind shanghai is still ramping up and then we add in giga texas and now keep in mind giga texas is a lot bigger than giga berlin so let's let's just pretend that giga texas is the same has the same output of batteries as giga berlin well, if we multiply this by two, that'd be 4.8 million plus the 1 million that we would get from Shanghai and Fremont together. That puts us at 5.8 million vehicles. And here's the kicker. This 5.8 million vehicles, it's the Y, it's the 3, the S, the X. And by the time that we're all ramped up here, it'll be the Cybertruck as well. Probably the Roadster will have some coming out as well. But this number will be by 2025. Think about that. Ford will just be ramping up their batteries and their trucks and everything. They'll just be getting started when Tesla's selling 5.8 million vehicles. So where do you think Tesla will be come 2025, 2026, 2027? And do you really think they're not gonna have other factories that they've built by then? Do you really think they're gonna sit on their, on their hands over the next four years? I don't think so. And keep in mind as well, these batteries that Tesla are making, are half the cost of what Ford and everybody else will be using. The 4680 will be the most cost-effective batteries there are. They can do more with less. Tesla's already doing more with less than anyone else. These are the things that like people just don't seem to understand when it comes to Tesla. This is why everybody says, Sandy Monroe, everyone says that Tesla is years ahead of the competition. Now, I want to give credit where credit's due. Ford is actually making an effort they're seeing the writing on the wall and they're trying to pivot as hard as they can. But the problem is, I don't think they're doing it fast enough and I don't think they're actually doing anything interesting or innovating. Think about this. This big announcement has to do with what? SK, who will be making the batteries, and Redwood, who will be doing all of the recycling. What's Ford doing other than giving them money and adding more to their own debt? Where's their expertise? Where's their innovation? Where is their contribution other than funding it? What what I could see happening long time long term is SK looks at it as hey, I put in four, you put in seven billion, and now once you go out of business, well maybe we'll buy your part of of the factory pennies on the dollar. I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but I'm just saying from the far east has been ahead of us for a long time when it comes to negotiation of stuff like this. So I could see the South Koreans were really outsmarting Ford from this perspective. Now, we'll see how this plays out. It'll be interesting. Now, before we end this episode, I want to take a look at some quotes that Farley had given to CNBC over a phone interview that I found interesting to say the least. I went ahead and clipped the article and I highlighted some things that I thought were important or interesting. So let's read this real quick. Ford Motor stock price has more than doubled since Jim Farley became CEO a little less than a year ago, and yet he says the shares absolutely have more room to run as he begins to lay groundwork for a massive turnaround plan. First of all, those words are empty. It's a CEO saying this. I would expect any CEO to say this, so you know, unless you have context with it, it's pointless. But let's see if he gives context. There's a growing confidence that Ford will be one of the winners in this new digital transformation in the industry he told CNBC during a phone interview. What? Where is this growing confidence? Where I haven't seen it. Who's this growing confidence coming from? You can't you can't just say when you're the CEO that there's a growing confidence that Ford will be one of the winners. The other people have to say that. Other people have to say that about you. You can't say that. You can't say that and just make it true. Like, that makes no sense. If a analyst says it, if Sandy Monroe says it, right? If external people, if exter external experts say, hey, we are we are building confidence that they're going to be one of the winners. Like, you, you can't, like, you're as biased as you can be. Like, come on, like, give me a break. What is this crap? Like, 
I'm sorry, you just can't say that about yourself and expect anyone to take it seriously. Monday, shortly after the company announced plans to invest $11.4 billion in U.S. production of electric batteries and vehicles, we have a lot of incredible upside. Again, like, sure, cool. Where's your incredible upside? Because you announced more debt that you're going to take on to invest in this transition? Okay, what, what have you done for me lately? What have you done? Where's your innovation? All you have are marketing things and headlines. You're no different than GM right now. At, at least GM, you know, they're actually trying to work on batteries, like actually doing engineering themselves. You're not doing anything. Shares of the automaker closed Monday up. All right. None of that's really that interesting. If we scroll down to, to the next uh, paragraph down here, Farley said that joint venture, that the joint venture with South Korean battery maker SK Innovation is a good example of companies ongoing tr uh, transformation under the Ford Plus turnaround plan that was announced in May. The plan aims to make existing operations more profitable and better positioned automaker for emerging segments such as data as well as connected autonomous and electric vehicles. So they're saying two different things from how I take it. The plan aims to make existing operations more profitable and better position the automaker for the inevitable. It's interesting to hear him talk about this turnaround plan, this turnaround plan, it's almost as if they're admitting that they have failed. They have failed on all fronts. And they've kind of talked about this, but it's weird to hear it straight, straight from the CEO. I mean, he's essentially bashing the last CEO is what he's saying. And, yeah, you know, fair enough. I guess that's why he got into his position was because the last CEO didn't pivot to electric fast enough. The autonomous part. All right. I, I guess they're doing something. But have you seen Sandy Monroe's drive with the Ford people with the Blue Cruise or blue clues as some of us call it. it if you haven't you really have to see it I, i'll leave the link below it's hilarious actually you know what let's watch until you change lanes manually take an off ramp manually um the uh the navigation isn't necessarily integrated into the feature lane changes are manual you would manually indicate that you want to shift left or right hands back on the steering wheel change lanes once you're centered uh, the vehicle will offer hands-free once again after you change lanes manually. Normally, whoops. Keep the hands yeah, so this off. this is a, a bit of a sharp curve. This oh. this is a, a bit of a sharp curve. This one and the next one, it's going to uh, to keep you safe. It's going to ask you to put your hands back on the steering wheel. And I'm glad that you noticed that. That's an indication that our immersive cluster with all of its animations is catching your eye. So now yeah. that we're through the curve, it's going to offer hands-free back to you. And then okay. once it approaches this next one, it'll likely ask you to revert hands-on once again. Yeah. And it really only does that for sharp curves, as these two curves are. Oh. This, this is a, a bit of a sharp curve. Just put that back on. Ready. Ready, but not doing anything. Hang on. So, um, let me get this going again. Yeah, so it looks like you accidentally bumped the cruise control off button. So if you hit the leftmost button just to reactivate. Well, I, I'm pretty sure that it wouldn't have done it on that curve. Oh, that's probably true. So, <clears throat> so that, I'm pretty sure that it wouldn't have done it on that curve. Oh, that's probably true. So, <clears throat> so, that, so another quote, he goes on to say, I would say this is the largest transformation of Ford since the Model T scaled, Farley said. I don't think we've even been fully recognized yet for our winning status in the digital transformation of our industry. W what winning status? What digital transformation have they done? They've made the Mach-E, which is selling about 2,000 vehicles in the States, producing about five to 9,000 a month, and the rest of those are going overseas, and yet they claim they have a 20 gigawatt hour production ability, which would create about 300,000 vehicles and they're only making one third of those vehicles. So are you talking about the Blue's Clues innovation, digital transformation that we just saw there? Is that what you're talking about? Is that what you haven't been rewarded enough for? Get out of here with this. I, I don't understand what he's talking about. This is comical. It's This is classic CEO, MBA mentality of I'm going to say, all the right things were undervalued were not properly valued people are underestimating us like throw all that to the side where is the engineering you are a you should be an engineering company you're an automotive company you have the likes of sandy monroe who came out from you you have you have people who should be real engineers there and this is the type of stuff you're saying like you're not showing us anything you have to show us stuff before you make statements like this you can't make statements like this when then you have tesla coming out with a humanoid come on you you are just not in the same paradigm you're not in the same 
planet as Tesla. And you're going to sit here and talk about this? I get it. Humanoids. Yeah, they're automotive. Tesla is doing humanoids and battery packs. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, now you want to say Tesla's not really an automotive company. Sure, you can make that argument. Then let's talk about full self-driving. Where are you the winner on that? I'm sorry. S spare me with this. This is just silly. So Farley, Farley's predecessor, I mean, they, they kind of just trash him here, which is funny. Um, and it's actually kind of sad. But it goes on to say, the investment with SK is in addition to the 30 billion the company previously said it would invest in electric vehicles through 2025 about 7 billion of which had already been invested before february i i don't know if we've seen the results of that 7 billion yet aside from the harder pivot to evs and turnaround plan see again th these are two different things it's it's weird just to hear them openly talk about how one part of this funding is for the ev transition but now they're also talking about this is the turnaround plan. Like it sounds like that's the messaging they have internally for the company, which I can tell you isn't the best messaging internally, right? It doesn't create a culture of excitement or anything. It's if we don't make these changes, we're not going to have a job soon. Like th that's the feeling that people get internally. Like I've been there. I've been with companies like that where that's the feeling. It, it's not a great culture to be a part of. Farley has recruited high profile executives to the automakers such as former Tesla and Apple executive Doug Field and Mike Amen, who was most recently president of Online Lowe's. Now, for those of you who don't know, there's this kind of feud over engineers between Tesla and Apple. And some of the labeling that people have gotten, at least engineers at Apple, are that Apple is essentially the graveyard for engineers who couldn't hack it at Tesla. When you're sitting here talking about getting someone who was at Tesla and then Apple, and now they're at Ford, if Apple is the graveyard for Tesla and Apple no longer has this individual, what does that tell you? I mean, to me, this really sounds like it's an exec who's going from one big paycheck to another big paycheck, just based on title and prestige. So he worked at Tesla, so that obviously landed him the job at Apple, got the job at Apple. Now Ford wants to pay more money for him because he's been with Tesla. So, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen these type of execs. They just chase the money. They're not actually there to build up the company. They're just there to get their five years, make that, you know, get, get that huge payout and then move on to the next to the next show. So not a fan of it. I, I'm, to me, none of that's impressive. Um, and then we go on down here. I'm especially proud of the team that we've assembled. We have a lot of fantastic Ford leaders and we have incredible new talent in the company. Again, I, I hate to be the bear bad news, but the best talent is going to companies like Tesla. Even if all of the talent doesn't go to Tesla, they're going to go to Silicon Valley. They're going to go to companies like Apple. They're going to go to companies like Google, like AWS. Ford's not what people consider like where I want to go if I'm very big in the tech or I'm big in the software, right? That's not where I want to go to further my career and to do exciting work. It's going to be these other companies. I hate this. I, again, I get it. They're trying. They're saying all the right things. They have to do all these things. They're investing a lot of money. They're taking on more debt. I give Ford all the credit. They're doing all the right things that they're supposed to do. The only problem is that they're just too late. I really think they're too late. Now, this isn't to say that they won't somehow pivot or GM will go down and they'll be able to use that to survive or vice versa. But I just don't think all these OEMs are going to last, especially if you have to wait until the later half of the 2020s to really ramp everything up, right? Where are you going to be in competing against Tesla? All the OEMs won't last. They'll have to consolidate. One will have to die off and the other one takes more of the business. And they're going to be, they're going to be a shell of who they are today. Ford's already losing number, have declined sales for the last few years. They're all just going to become shells of themselves. Tesla's getting more and more sales. Where do you think those are coming from? There isn't an EV market. There's an auto market. And Tesla is growing exponentially. Think about it. All right, everybody. We're going to leave it there today. I appreciate if you stuck to the end. I know this was just yet another Ford video, but... How can we not cover it when Ford had such big announcements today? Even though they're just announcements, I have to give them credit. It's exciting. I'm happy for them. They're doing the right things. Hopefully it pays off for them. Like I always say, Tesla can't make every EV out there. So we're going to have to have other people. And we need more North American contributors other than just Tesla and Rivian if they ramp up. So And Lucid as well. I won't forget about them. So this hopefully will be a good sign for things to come. All right. We're going to leave it there. Thank you all for watching. Do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell. I love you all. Peace.